I'm from Collard Greens and Fried Fish. I'm from, if you ain't from the same hood, you get this. I'm from where girls wear too much makeup and mini skirts. I am from where a dead friend space on a t-shirt. I'm from school fights and the wrong guidance. I'm from where walking alone, it can lead to a big challenge. I'm from gunshots at night, one or two. I'm from where a person dies from the step on a shoe. The real cool thing about Penfo is that they bring the author in and they give a class set of the books. They're pushing the conversation. They're not just pushing the act of holding a book in your hand, but they're pushing the act of reading a book and letting the book become a part of your everyday living. I'd never met a writer before until I became one, and I was 31 years old. And so that was, to me, I always felt like, well, that's, that's another person completely than I am. How am I ever going to do that? And I feel like by doing this, you take the mystery out of it. As a writer, or as a storyteller, I, I think that I'm in the kitchen with one person, and I'm telling the story to that person, and I want to grab the person by the neck and hold her, the person until the last page. It was then that Mama, dabbing her perspiring upper chest, first felt the bullet. The Penn Faulkner Reading Series had been in existence for a number of years. Um, we were bringing about eight to 15 writers to give public readings, and the thought came about, since all these amazing writers are coming to town, why not bring them into classrooms? Then the idea came about that we could give the kids advanced copies of their books, so it was just sort of a natural outgrowth of the reading series. I think the first year there were between six and 10 visits. Now, this year, we've done close to 60. I guess if there was one rule that I feel like writers should abide by, because otherwise I feel like it's not very honest of them, they should write a book that they would want to read. The way I see it, people want to read stuff that's like more realistic yeah. to their lifestyle. Yeah, they can read yeah. Like people in DC like to read books like that, because it's like room. what they see around them, yeah. they want to read about. Yeah. Yeah. It's really um, illuminating for a lot of writers who haven't been in a public school is going through the metal detector and then having all these other expectations turned on their head because the kids are so great and they're so well prepared. When Isabel Allende was here uh, watching Kelly, a, a, a student in the class, I'm suddenly saying like I've never felt this way about a book before. I didn't realize that a story could resonate so much with my life and, and saying this across generations and Cultural, theoretical, cultural divides. I love telling stories. Yeah, I Wonderful. love telling stories. It's like it's from the heart. Like when you said writing yeah. is your passion. It's me learning and music and absolutely. Someone uh, asked the question about, like, how was I able to forgive my, my father? And you have to imagine that these are high school students who have children or are pregnant at the time, and they're struggling in their relationships with their, you know, their, their child's father. And when I shared my story of forgiveness, um, you know, one of the students just erupted in tears. Specifically to the boys that are locked up, um, you have to remember that they're they're in a cell every night, and they can't they can't leave. You open up a book and you can leave. You know you can go somewhere else. You can go anywhere else. All right. So we all know what's happening on May tenth. We're going to read Question of Freedom by Mr. Dwayne Betts. He's going to come in and talk to you guys, right? He wants to get to know you guys. This, we decided, was good because it's nonfiction and it's something that a lot of these students can identify with. It was automatic and weighed nothing in my palm. And I couldn't figure how something that weighed nothing could have, have me slumped in the back. We're really trying to uh, pay attention to close detail. Really trying to... Uh... More from the, get a lot from the book so we could be prepared with questions. I don't even understand. I'm excited. 
because I got a lot of questions to ask him that he didn't mention in the book that I would like to find out. What two worlds was he caught in between? The one? What's that? Good life and the bad life. Okay, good. The good life, which is when he's a what? Good student, a good son. Then the bad life. Just the neighborhood, the environment he was around. The environment he was in, right? They're definitely excited to, to meet him, and it definitely gives him a lot more incentive to focus on the book. Okay, excellent. Perfect. Yeah, man, you're writing really well these days. That's great. Have any questions, feel free to ask them. You know, he's about to tell y'all a little something about the book and a little about himself. Hope y'all learned something. So what you about to say? I guess we could do it this way. I'll read a little bit, and then, um, and then we'll just start talking. 16 years hadn't even done a good job of my voice. It cracked in my head as I tried to explain away the police car driving my 126 pounds to the Fairfax County Jail. Everything near enough for me to touch gleamed with the color of violence. The black of the deputies holster the guns, the broken leather of the seat I sat on, and the silver of the cuffs that held my hands before me in prayer. When I closed my eyes, I thought about the way the gun felt in my palm. I tried to remember what caliber pistol it was. Meeting the offer, you get a different aspect. Like they, you could see them face to face and they could tell you instead of like what you just read, like they could tell you more, like you get a different view, a perspective. Random questions? I got, I got one for you. How do you think that, uh, like you said, reading save you, reading and writing save you when you was in jail. Or I, like if you wouldn't have been, if you wouldn't have been a writer, who do you think you would have grown to be? Like I, I've been on panels with psychologists who got PhDs who spent their whole life studying, right, and been able to hold my own. I've been on panels with lawyers, with judges, right, and been able to hold my own. And it's not because I was born brilliant. It's because I've read a lot of books. A lot of these young people would not have exposure to these authors and these writers and these books if it wasn't for Penn Falcon. I mean, think about it. Right now, we're on 4th Street. The closest bookstore is 30, 40 minutes away. It's important to give to, you know, people who need food and people who need shelter and people who need coats. But giving someone a book, that's sort of like teaching a person to fish. They put a book in a child's hand and says, this is yours and this is what's open to you. And I mean, I, you can't put a price on that. Everything that somebody would give to this program goes towards putting the books in the hands of kids who have never been given a book before by an author and have never met an author before. And, and it's one of the best um, uses of your money that I think that you, could, that you could do. I can't think of anything more worthwhile that I've ever been involved with, you know? Uh, Janae says, to me, this book means that every human being, whether young or old, should live your life to the fullest. They feel as though the teacher or books that they read don't have nothing in common with them. So they just act, you know, man, don't nobody understand me. But when they read books like this and they, they see that their teacher is giving them this, they take it as, wow, they really, they really are trying to make a difference in my life. I think Dwayne just wants us to know there are consequences for everything you do in life, no matter what your size, age, or color. Perfect, excellent. That's the truth right there. For a couple days, actually, we discussed the poem um, where he says, I come from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's sort of his memories and flashbacks. I come from beneath a cloud of white smoke, a lit pipe, and the way glass heats rocks into a piece of heaven. From the weight of nothing in my palm, a bullet and an unfired snub nose revolver, and every day, the small muscles in my finger threaten to pull a trigger, slight and curved like my woman's eyelashes. That's where I got this poem from, from a lot of influence from what he had read, because I've been through you know, similar situations as him. So I figure I could, I could put my own, if he can do it, One more minute. I can put my own life into the work. The poem that Daquan wrote, that poem really, really showed me what, what can be done. I'm from where the white man is looked on as successful and rich. I'm from where the black man is looked on as another statistic. I'm from drug dealers and fast cash. I'm from where a black person is labeled the face behind a ski mask. I'm from where being in jail and living a hard life makes you a beast. I'm from Southeast. 